welcome to Wheels Up the Sunrise on Wheels. I'm Michelle Newman. Today's program is all about Italy. And like all Wheels Up episodes, it has three segments. First, I'll take you on a trip, looking at all the fabulous cities in Italy. We'll start at the tip in Sicily, and we'll make our way up all the way to the top, where we will end up in Lake Como. Next, we'll craft with Caroline, making our very own pizza a fun Italian flag, and a collage picture of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And finally, I hope you'll play trivia with Sierra. From the ancient streets of Rome to the waterways of Venice, the beauty of the Italian lakes to the glamour of the Amalfi Coast, there are so many amazing Italian cities and regions. Today I want to take you on a trip, visiting some of my favorite places in Italy. Italy is a country in southern Europe, bordering France, Switzerland, Austria, and Slovenia. It is easy to recognize on a map because the country is shaped like a high-heeled boot. Or some say it looks like the boot is kicking a ball, which is the island of Sicily. So let's begin our adventure in Sicily, the largest Mediterranean island rich in history. The Valley of the Temples has the well-preserved ruins of eight ancient Greek temples. It brings together the temples of gods and goddesses, as well as the area of the necropolis and sanctuaries outside the walls. The Temple of Concordia is one of the best-preserved temples. And don't be fooled by its name, it's not really in a valley, rather it's located on a ridge outside the town of Arangento. A couple of years ago it was the set for an Italian fashion show by Dolce & Gabbana. Next, in the capital city of Palermo, we can step back in time to the Middle Ages, an incredible church built more than 1,000 years ago. The Montreal Cathedral is regarded as the most beautiful Norman church in Sicily. The mosaics were made with more than 4,000 pounds of pure gold. Craftsmen from Constantinople were employed to help speed up the work. These Byzantine mosaics are among the most magnificent in the world. In addition to ruins and churches, Sicily has many natural wonders. From the smoking craters of volcanoes like Mount Etna, to its beautiful beaches with its white sand, cobalt blue sea, and magnificent nature reserves. Sicily is also special because it's where gelato was invented. This treat tastes different than our ice cream because it has less fat and less air, giving it a richer texture. Lemon and strawberry are among the most popular flavors in all of Italy. Gelato shops can be found in every city, and it's quite delicious. Next, magically suspended between the blue sky and the colored seas, lies the Amalfi Coast, widely considered Italy's most scenic stretch of coastland. It lies along the southern flanks of the Bay of Naples. Its most famous towns, Amalfi, Positano, and Ravella, have captivated and inspired many for centuries. To get there, you take the road of a hundred bends built onto the edge of this cliff. This narrow and windy road is carefully designed to be a little narrower than two cars side by side. It will lead you past a landscape of towering bluffs, pastel-colored villages terraced in hillsides, luxurious gardens, and amazing views of the turquoise waters and green swath mountains. Positano has many stairs and steps, some as steep as a ladder. Around every bend are glimpses of the sea, little wonderful shops with crochet and white linen dresses, beautiful flowers, and everywhere lemon candy, lemon soap, lemon scented perfume, lemon jello, and pretty much anything lemon flavored you could possibly want. As you make your way to the bottom of the village, you'll stumble upon the beach. Forget long sandy stretches, shores in this part of Italy are pebbly coves, pulled from towering cliffs with rapidly plunging deep blue sea underfoot. Not far from the famous town of Positano lies my favorite hotel in the world, the San Pietro. Carved into the sheer rock face, like something out of a James Bond movie, the San Pietro offers spectacular, uninterrupted views of the Mediterranean Sea and is an incredibly special hideaway. On our way to Rome, let's make a quick stop in Naples, birthplace of pizza. Pizza became popular in Naples in the 1700s. The tomatoes that were used on top of the flatbread were brought over from Peru, and at first people were worried they were poisonous. 
However, once they established, they were delicious red balls of heaven that pizza was born. In 1889, it was transformed by a Neapolitan baker who created a pizza based on the three colors of the Italian flag, fresh tomatoes red, basil green, and mozzarella cheese white, and named the type of pie for Queen Margarita. Not far from Naples is one of Italy's most interesting attractions, Pompeii. You can step back in time and see how people lived in the year 79 AD, almost 2,000 years ago, when Mount Vesuvius, a volcano near the Bay of Naples, destroyed the city, covering it in ash. Today, thousands of tourists marvel at the sensation of walking through the best-preserved example of an ancient Roman city. Next, we're off to Italy, its capital, Rome, a city that's been around for almost 3,000 years and is filled with amazing sights. Inside the boundaries of the city is the smallest country in the world, Vatican City, a completely independent city-state that covers just over 100 acres, fitting easily inside of New York's Central Park. Vatican City is governed by the Pope. It makes its own money, prints its own stamps, and has its own flag. Inside the two-mile walls of Vatican City lies St. Peter's Square. It may be familiar as a place where the Pope comes out to speak or bless the crowd. Along the square is St. Peter's Basilica, the largest cathedral in the world. You can even climb to the top and get a magnificent view of Rome. On the other side of the square is the Vatican Palace, which contains the Pope's apartments, museums, a library, and the famous Sistine Chapel. The Sistine Chapel is one of the greatest treasures of Vatican City and is a chapel renowned for its art, especially the ceiling painted by Michelangelo and attracts more than 5 million visitors each year. Quite spectacular. Let's go outside Vatican City and explore Rome. Our first stop is the Trevi Fountain, considered the most spectacular fountain in Rome. It's famous as a place for visitors to toss a coin into and make a wish. They say if you do so, you will one day return to Rome. The Pantheon is the best preserved building from ancient Rome. Even after 2,000 years, its dome remains the largest unsupported dome in the world. The oculus is the eye of the Pantheon and provides the only source of light in the center of the ceiling. A clever lighting trick happens every April 21st when sunlight hits just right, filling the entrance with light. Today, the Pantheon's a Roman Catholic church, but it was constructed to be a temple for all the Roman gods. Our last stop in Rome is the Colosseum, the largest Roman amphitheater, meaning oval building with a stage or arena in the center. It was built from the year 72 to 80, and for the next 500 years, it allowed more than 50,000 people to watch exotic animals and gladiator fights. Now over six million people visit it every year, and it's one of the seven wonders of the modern world. Next, we're off to Florence, one of Europe's great art cities. It was home to Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael. It's currently home to some of their most famous artwork. In the Uffizi Art Gallery, you can see paintings by Giotto, canvases by Botticelli, and sculptures by Michelangelo. But don't worry, there's more to Florence than just museums and monuments. It's bursting with quirky shops, fancy bridges, and interesting architecture. Not far away is the city of Pisa. Its most famous structure is the Bell Tower. You probably know it better as the Leaning Tower of Pisa. As it was being built, one side of the tower began to sink into the ground. As builders completed the tower, they tried to fix the leaning problem, but they failed. Recently, engineers began removing some of the earth beneath it. The work made the tower more stable, but it didn't completely straighten it. It is a fun spot for pictures. A little further up the coast is one of my favorite little seaside villages, Portofino. It's filled with colorfully painted buildings. The town is clustered around a half-moon-shaped harbor filled with all types of boats, from summer yachts to odd fishing boats. It's lined with stores, restaurants, cafes. Portofino's clear green waters are great for swimming, diving, and boating. Next, let's travel across Italy to the other coast. Along the Adriatic Sea is the fairy tale city called Venice. Venice was founded over 1,500 years ago and lies on 117 different islands that are linked by 150 canals 
and over 400 bridges. The buildings are supported by and built upon oak and pine piles that are driven deep into the ground. No cars are allowed in Venice. Instead, people travel by boats of every type. From the water, you can get a sweeping view of the Grand Canal, the most beautiful street <laughs> in Venice, which crosses the city forming an S-shape. Along its path are many old palaces with their main entrances opening straight onto the water. The waters are filled with gondolas, water taxis, cargo barges, delivery boats, private launches, police boats, and maybe even a kayak or two. Piazza San Marco is the heart of Venice and has been the center of the city for more than a thousand years. Since the founding of the city, you'll see the Doge, another name for the Venetian leader's house, the Church of St. Mark, and the bell tower called the Campanile, and they've been landmarks of the Piazza forever. Unfortunately, as the Piazza is Venice's lowest point, it often floods and authorities build wooden footbridges allowing tourists and citizens to walk around. Everywhere you look in Venice, you'll see lions. No, not the roaring types, but the winged lion, which is a symbol of the city's patron and founder, St. Mark. They can be seen all over on the clock tower, entrance to the Doge's palace, on the exterior of the basilica, and some you can even climb on. Of course, one cannot visit Venice without taking a gondola, the traditional black rowing boat is the most famous part of the city. By law, gondolas are painted black with exactly six coats of paint. The boat has plush seating and is covered with gold decorations. The gondolier wears the traditional costume of black pants and a striped shirt and possibly a straw hat. Sometimes even he or she will sing. This is a ride you'll never forget. Before leaving Venice, let's make a brief stop on the island of Murano where all Venice's glassblowers have their workshop. This is an art where amazing glass objects are created when a blob of glass is softened by heat. It often involves blowing air into a tube and then sculpting it slowly into amazing little figurines. I think it's quite mesmerizing. Next, we're off to our final stop, Lake Cuomo, which lies in Northern Italy's Lombardy region and is located on the Italian-Swiss border. It's an upscale resort area known for its dramatic scenery set against the foothills of the Alps. The lake is shaped like an upside down Y with three slender branches that meet at the resort town of Bellagio. At the bottom of the southwest branch lies the city of Cuomo with its medieval walls and a fun ride in a funicular that travels up to the mountain town of Brunati for an amazing view. While modern tourism has transformed some of the town's lakes and mountain views, they're just as beautiful as they were 2,000 years ago. Well, our trip around the beautiful country of Italy must come to an end. Did you have a favorite city or area? I look forward to seeing you next time. Well, that was fun. Let's go crack with Caroline. to do arts and crafts with you today. Today's video was all about Italy, so we're going to make three really fun Italian themed crafts. I hope you have fun. So first we're going to make a pizza craft and what you will need is some different colored pieces of paper. I'm using white for the crust, red for some pepperoni, brown for some mushrooms, and yellow for the cheese. And you can always use white paper and color it if you don't have colored paper. And you will also need some glue, scissors, and crayons or something you can draw with. So the first step to make our pizza is we're going to make our crust. So you could take your white paper and you're gonna cut a big triangle. And now we're going to make the crust. And on real pizza, it looks like it's a little bit rolled. So we're gonna make it rolled too. So you can go like this and then roll it up a little bit. And if you need to, you could put some glue so that it stays just like that. So now I'm going to take my brown crayon and I'm going to color this part of the crust brown because 
That's what color it is on the pizza. And then I'm going to take my red crayon and I'm going to make the sauce. And you can make whatever kind of pizza you like. So you can make white pizza, or you can, and you can add whatever toppings you want to your pizza. So that's the next step. We're going to make our toppings. So first I'm gonna take my yellow paper and I'm gonna cut some cheese. So I'm going to fold it a few times so that I can get a bunch of slices. And I'm going to cut little rectangles. I'm gonna cut a little rectangle like that. And now we have some cheese. So I'm gonna glue these on and you can add as much cheese as you want. Maybe you can make it like how you like it on your real pizza. I like a lot of cheese on my pizza. And you don't have to add cheese. You can add whatever toppings you want. And next I'm going to make some mushrooms. So I'm going to fold my paper again so that I can get a bunch of mushrooms and I'm going to show you how to draw it first because this one's a little bit tricky. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a line like this and then you can draw a piece like that and then back down. Now I'm going to cut this out. Now we have some mushrooms that you can glue on and you can add as many as you want. I'm gonna add only those two. And then we're going to add some pepperoni. So I'm gonna make two little slices of pepperoni. So I'm gonna fold my paper once, and I'm just gonna cut a circle. And now I'm going to color my red paper for the pepperoni. I'm going to color it brown because Pepperoni is a reddish brown color. Like that. And now I'm going to glue these on. And now my pizza's all finished. So this is my finished pizza, but remember you can add whatever toppings you like on your pizza. So you can add peppers or olives or whatever else you like. Bon appetito, that means have a good meal in Italian. So the next project we are going to make is an Italian flag. And they are red, white, and green. So you're gonna need some red paper, some green paper, and a piece of white paper. And you'll also need scissors and glue. So first what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your white paper and you're gonna fold it to the middle. And then you're gonna take the other side and fold it over like this and then you're going to flatten it down. And this is going to make the three different sections for the flag, and they're all equal. So now you're going to take your green paper and you can line it up so that it's the right length. And then you can take a pencil and you can mark it off like that so that you know where to cut it. So now you could take your green piece of paper and glue it on to here. And the green is gonna go on the left side. Just like that. And now you could do the same thing with the red. And you can even, when you're finished with this, you can decorate your flag if you want. You can add some glitter or paint or whatever you want to make your flag extra special. And this is the finished flag. So this is my finished flag. And if you want, you can decorate your flag and you can even make all different flags from around the world. So now we're going to make a leaning tower of Pisa craft. So you will need some paper. I'm using white for the leaning tower of Pisa, some green, and some dark green for my background. You will also need scissors, glue, and some markers or colored pencils or something you can color with. So first we're going to draw 
the Leaning Tower of Pisa on our white paper. And first, we're gonna draw the piece that will make it stand up. So first, you're gonna draw a line up like that, and then another line next to it like this. And now we're gonna start drawing our tower. So first you can draw the rectangle, which is gonna go like this, and it's going to lean a little bit, like the real tower. Just like that. And then on top, there's a piece that's a little bit smaller, like this. So now we're gonna start to draw the arches. So first I'm gonna draw a line and then some arches. And then another line. And you can continue doing this all the way up. And then we're gonna put some on the, this one too. Just like this. And now I'm going to cut this out. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this piece underneath and make sure that you fold it straight across like this. And now you can put it anywhere you want on the paper. So I'm gonna put some glue and I'm gonna put it right here. And at first it's going to fall down, but don't worry because now we're gonna make it stand up. So now you can take your other piece of paper and we're going to cut a long strip. So make sure you cut it on the long side of your paper. Like this. So now that I have my strip of paper, I'm going to line it up so that it goes right here. So right underneath the shortest little part of your tower. And then we're going to glue it on. So it's gonna go like this. And then you can fold it back so that it stays folded there. And then you're going to fold this so that when you lean it back, it can rest on that piece of paper. And you might have to fold it a little bit more so that it can stay. And if it isn't staying, you can pull it back a little bit more. And if you put it up a little bit higher, it should stay. And you might, you can even put a little bit of glue on the end and stick it on so that it stays even better. And now once it stays, you can add whatever you want to the background. And I had some extra light green paper, so I'm going to cut a square and I'm going to draw a person because there's always people lined up to see the tower. So I'm going to draw a little stick figure. And then I'm going to fold it back like this and put some glue. And then you can stick it on the background and it looks like people waiting. And you can draw as many people as you want and glue them all over so that it looks like a bunch of people waiting. And you can add whatever you're, you want to your background. So as you can see, I added some more people and a bush and you can add whatever you want. You can add some flowers, you can add a bush like I did, you can add some trees, whatever you want to make it your very own. I hope you had fun making these Italian themed crafts with me. Ciao! Thanks Caroline. Let's go play trivia with Sierra. Hi everyone! My name is Sierra, or Cece for short. Welcome to the trivia portion of Wheels Up. I am so excited to play trivia with you today. We are in for some fun with 10 questions to puzzle your puzzler. We have four answers and only one that's correct. Can you figure it out? Well, are you ready? Let's play.
Welcome to Wheels Up with Sunrise on Wheels. Today's trivia is called All Around Italy. Who's excited to play? Question number one. What are the colors of the Italian flag? Are they A, red, green, and white? B, red, white, and blue? C, red, white, and yellow? Or D, purple, pink, and green? You got it! Red, green, and white. That's the colors of the Italian flag. Question number two. What famous artist painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel? Was it A, Leonardo da Vinci, B, Michelangelo, C, Raphael, or D, Donatello? Hmm. If you guessed Michelangelo, you were correct. Question number three. In which Italian city can you find the Leaning Tower? Is it an A, Pisa, B, Perugia, C, Firenze, or D, Parma? Where is that Leaning Tower? Do you remember? It's in Pisa, A. Great job! Question number four. What is the name of the largest Baroque fountain in Rome? Is it A, the Fountain of Triton, B, the Felice Fountain, C, the Trevi Fountain, or D, the Fountain of Youth? I love fountains. And the Trevi Fountain is the largest Baroque fountain in Rome. Wow! Question number five. Bellagio, one of the most beautiful towns in Italy, is located on which lake? A. Lake Maggiore B. Lake Geneva C. Lake Garda or D. Lake Como Where is Bellagio located? On Lake Como! Question number six. Modern day pizza was invented in what city? A. Naples B. Venice C. Rome or D. Pisa I love pizza. And modern day pizza was invented in Naples. My favorite, margarita. Mmm. Question number seven. What color are gondolas in Venice? Are they A, yellow, B, blue, C, green, or D, black? And gondolas are those big boats that people use to get around in Venice. And they're black! Sometimes with gold trimming. Question number eight. Name the volcano that erupted in Italy in AD 79. Was it A, Mount St. Helens, B, Mount Etna, C, Mount Vesuvius, or D, Mount Rushmore? Hmm. Mount Vesuvius. Can you believe that? A volcano eruption? Wow. Question number nine. Which of these islands is the largest in the Mediterranean? A, Sardinia. B. Sicily C. Capri or D. Elba The largest island in the Mediterranean Sicily! Question number 10. Italy is shaped like A. Is it A. Boot B. Triangle C. Dog or D. Circle Hmm, do you remember what Italy is shaped like? You're right, a high-heeled boot. Great job. That's all for trivia today with Wheels Up on Sunrise on Wheels. Wow, you did such a good job. Thank you for playing trivia with me today. I look forward to playing with you again soon. Thanks, Sierra, and thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to watch more Wheels Up episodes, you can find us on YouTube, Sunrise Association, 
Wheels Up has its own playlist, or download our app at Sunrise Studios. I look forward to seeing you next time.